Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Starting from tomorrow, Nigeria will deny entry to non-Nigerians and non-residents coming from India, Brazil and Turkey. The ban comes as the countries witness a new wave of the coronavirus. India has been particularly hard hit with hospitals, mugs and crematoriums overwhelmed. The country has been recording hundreds of thousands of cases daily as well as double-digit deaths. Even though the infection rate in Nigeria has slowed drastically, concerned citizens say there is need to be at alert. A public health expert, Dr. Tsuyi Mibawante, is joining us to talk about this. Good morning, Dr. Tsuyi. Good morning. I want to get your quick reactions to this and also to those of you know public health experts as well who say this ban should be extended as well to people who transit through India. Well, um, it's a very dire situation worldwide now. Well, look, we're seeing two huge epicenters of COVID-19. And the fact is that if the world is not rising up to respond, you know, it's a moral burden, it's a health imperative for the whole world to rise up and say we need to stop the spread of coronavirus, both, both in India and even in South America. The India case become peculiar. Now, India has top 400,000 infection daily, and as much as 3,000 deaths, 400,000 infections. In fact, the funeral pyre that used to burn people, it's, it's littering everywhere, big, big cities, nowhere to put dead bodies. And then we, we, the, the, the key lesson that we must learn, apart from saying that we're banning entrance, if you ban entrance of people, well, that is a step. But the higher step is the fact that even those who are coming must be subjected to proper follow-up you know, and quarantine in such a way that we don't allow the spread of the deadly strain from India to enter into Nigeria. Now, how did India get to this level? What happened was simply this. The Prime Minister of India just woke up one day early this year and felt that, well, we've won the war against COVID. He ended up campaigning, political campaign, without wearing masks. And even his followers didn't wear masks. He neglected every protocol that he, the, the prime minister neglected every protocol that had to do with um, preventing COVID-19. He did that, then religious festival, and then everything opened up like that. And lo and behold, the Mutan Strait, Indian of this population, despite being home to the Serum Institute of India, was able to vaccinate less than two percent of its population. So they, there was no vaccination. Okay. The rollout was bad. They were shipping their vaccines outside India. So, and then we have this problem and a very bad strain. 35% of COVID-19 deaths occurred in South America. So you see, all the countries, Bogota, Brazil, Peru, Paraguay, Argentina, Chile, all of them accounted for as much as 35% another deadly strain of the virus. So we see that whether we like it or not, if, though we may not have direct link with, say, South America, we have diet linked with India. Because if we're in Nigeria, you, you don't get a diet flight going to India. You still have to transit through any of those countries, you know, that can then bring you to Nigeria. That is the key thing. We, we must be able to do our algorithm in such a way that we can track anybody that transits through any of this country. Now, at home front, we're having a huge challenge. Since how many, it is one year now, We've only tested less than 2 million of 206 million population. That's like, what percentage is that? Maybe 0. something percent or 1% at maximum. That is not a true reflection of our COVID situation. Now we got vaccine. We got um, 3.92 million doses of vaccine in Nigeria. We've only been able to administer 1.1, let's say 1.2 million doses of that vaccine, less than half of that vaccine, in more than two months. That, that is not functional. That is, we're not deployed. Number one, the vaccine is not available. Secondly, when the, our rollout plan is bad. Thirdly, we have lowered all the things that we need to do all to right. prevent recurrence of COVID. So, so um, you know, there, there is <clears throat> the narrative, um, you know, when we went through the first and the second wave um, of, the, um, of the COVID, 
um, the lockdowns and what, you know everything that we had to do, uh, put in place, the infrastructure, like you've also mentioned, which isn't really, really sound. But somehow, some way, people would celebrate and say Nigeria survived it. You know, there's something about Africa that makes uh, COVID-19 not very, very, um, uh, so much of a deadly virus here. Um, would it be foolish to still lean on to those uh, beliefs that somehow, some way, we have maybe hot weather um, or, you know, we, we are resilient here. And so whatever is happening in India may not, you know, affect us that badly. Magical thinking will not help us. Hmm. Hope is not a strategy. The reality is this. If we're talking about hot weather, okay, Brazil also has tropical weather. But they are experiencing it. We, it's true, we call P1, very bad. Now, um, we don't know why we're not seeing much of the effect in Nigeria. But that does not mean that we should lower our guard. Because as, long, as much as 10,000 people are still active, that's already you know, a, a place where we can see a spike. And let us not forget that this virus kept mutating. We, you know there's a, a Nigerian mutant now. We're just, we're just studying it. If the virus mutates and bring out a worse form of it, and we have let down our guards as we have done now, nobody will be happy for it. We're having weak health system. We don't have vaccines. We're discontinuing non-pharmaceutical protocols. Nigeria is facing huge insecurity. There's an economic challenge. All these things will drive unrest. We should be able to connect all, all these things will drive unrest. It is imperative that Nigeria stand firm and look at what they can do and do effectively. We're not going to get vaccine from India. India is stopping the exposure. In fact, the, 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 the CEO of the, of, of the Serum Institute of, of India, uh, Ponawala, ran away because his life was under threat. They said, you are selling this vaccine. You are not giving it to us. He ran to London. Okay? So forget it. You are not getting vaccine from India for now. You now have Russia. We have China. Those people use vaccine for what we call vaccine diplomacy because... They put, they put condition for you to get the vaccine. We don't have the money to buy vaccine. Even if we're saying the Johnson & Johnson want to deploy it, where is the money to buy those vaccines? COVAX is having a problem because the people that are supposed to produce cheap vaccine for them are also having a problem. So what do we do? And there's no point in anywhere in Africa where we're doing research to, to, to develop a vaccine. It's not a difficult thing. So here we are. What then should Nigeria do? My own sincere thing is that we should not lower our guards. We shouldn't. Let us still keep using the non-pharmaceutical intervention that we know. Okay? But unfortunately, we're facing a huge uh, doubt arising from many sources. You know, a faith-based doubt where you know, the, 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 the distrust, the trust deficit between the government and the governed the corruption that entered into the vaccine distribution and palliative distribution. These are complex things that is actually affecting belief and people's ability to say we want to embrace non So based on these challenges, how effective might this new ban be? We know the government has said there'll be a $3,500 you know, fine for any defaulter of these travel ban. But in terms of structures, how strong do you think they are and can are authorities at the airport be able to assure that you know this ban indeed you know is effective? You see, I, 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 let's, we, we know our reality. I, I don't like pandering to people's um, you know uh, repeats. You know some tired repeats. You know we ban, we ban, we ban. Again, how do you monitor the ban? The, the ban can only be effective if we can trust our system. You know we've seen so many underhands happening at our airport. We've seen so many fake COVID reports coming from our institutions. We've seen big men that cannot be touched going through and running off short of the whole system that's supposed to keep us there. We hope it works. The only thing we can do is hope. But I've always repeat, hope can never be a strategy. Now, because it has to be layered check. A layered check in such a way that we can relate to the destination country and understand people that are having visa Nigerian visa, because if somebody is a resident, an Indian resident in Nigeria, he or she has a right to come to Nigeria. But what is the monitoring? You can't ban that one, definitely. If somebody is a Nigerian coming from India, he or she has a right to enter Nigeria. You can't ban him. So the question is that beyond this ban, what are you going to do? 
Okay. What are you going to do? What are those people transiting from other country that could be epicenter of those virus? What are you going to do? So you see, looking at ban and saying, listen, I'm putting a ban, well, nice, good for media, good for, you know, face value. But again, there are deeper things, you know, that may not make that ban work. So with all the um, uh, things that you mentioned, you know, make it difficult for, uh, like you said, there's a, a, tr a trust issue between the governed and uh, the, the government and the governed. Um, what, in what ways can we ensure that we at least um, you know, stick with the non-pharmaceutical um, uh, routes to keeping ourselves safe. It, it's going to be difficult to tell Nigerians now to stay at home. Um, no, you, you can't. That, that's even the worst scenario. You can't say that. I mean, let's face it. When the economy is bad, people are hustling terribly to, to make ends meet. Um, there's a lot of insecurity, you know, going on. You can't tell people to go. I, I think the best thing we can do is to go local and personalize intervention. I mean, now... The narratives, you know, because again, um, the, the, the information space has been taken over by a lot of doubts, okay? Um, it's going to be difficult for us to recapture the... The, 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 the trust. The, yes, the information space. and be able to direct information appropriately. But I, I think we should target individual. But, you know, there's no point for anybody to want to die when you can stay alive. People are looking up to you. They need your advice. You need your support. Don't, why are you in a hurry to die? So, we should be able to emphasize at the individual level what we can do, what we should do at the individual level. If, yes, they say the, the virus is gone, Nigeria has a super gene that, but please don't allow yourself to die. If you don't have reason to be in a party, run away. Let it be so necessary. If, and if you're there, these are the critical steps you need to take. If you have to be, you know, be anywhere, I mean, in the market, wash your, 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 wear your face mask. Okay, so that at least you are taking steps to protect yourself. And then, if, if, if you look at even the local government, you can look at, at, the, at the market and figure out at least distribute face masks, free face masks at the market, put um, some, some guards to watch out who is not putting on his mask. We need to look, look at what is possible. But I want to, you know, um, advise everybody Protect yourself personally. Okay. The government is not there for you. Oh, scary. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Tsuyi Mibawadu, for your time on The Breakfast this morning. And um, that's the much you can take regarding the COVID-19 and the ban on travel from India, Turkey, and Brazil. Do stay with us. A conversation on religion and states is up next.